the concept of whiteness is actually a legal concept. You know, sometimes people get uncomfortable when we even just say the word white, right? But it's actually a legal concept. And so, um, and so therefore, the creation of whiteness um, uh, is recognized or was recognized for a very long time in American law. So let me ask you this. Who then created the concept of whiteness? Not okay, the English, and you, you said white people? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's be specific here. Um, and, but which white people specifically? The English. Royalty in England or the monarchs. Okay, so you're closer to that. The, the white, slave-owning, land-owning white people. This did, whiteness initially did not apply to immigrant Europeans. Right? They eventually had to work their way into that status. Those indentured servants eventually had to work their way into whiteness. So, um, white wealthy male landowners, as I've said, and it was a legal status. So, white indentured servants were viewed as um, a temporary <coughs> status, like I've said, but Africans were then viewed as to be a permanent status of a slave. And so essentially um, the colonies and then eventually states adopted laws that basically cod codified whiteness that said if you have so much of um, black blood, you're black, right? And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but if you have European ancestry, then you're white. And guess what, poor white people who work our, our lands, um, we're not going to improve your wages. We're not going to um, make working conditions better for you, but we're going to give you whiteness. And that means you will never be a slave, right? And so our differences became then even more about class and magnified race, right? So race became that legal uh, biological concept that was intended to permanently separate people. <coughs> Any questions? Comments? Okay. So um, then we have you know crazy stuff coming up around scientific racism and racial categorization. So this is a picture of Dr. Samuel Morton in 1839. And he put out this really, really popular book called Crania Americana. And um, in this he touts about racial support. Racial superiority based on biology. So, in other words, you see pictures here where at the top is this kind of Grecian looking or European, actually Roman, more Roman looking um, uh, European, and then below him is this um, African looking man, and below the African looking man is an ape uh, depiction. And so um, and, he, and Samuel Morton wasn't the only one. He was just a popular one in the United States. But this happened in England. This happened in other European countries where somebody was always on top, right? So the Greeks put the Greeks on top, and Spanish put the Spaniards on top, etc. But almost always, Africans were at the bottom, and other races were below uh, Europeans. Um, this also fed into the eugenics movement, which was right the um, elimination of people to try to get pure races. So this was um, part of that foundation, and also that um, Hitler, um, when he was um, you know designing his um, you know genocidal policies, um, actually looked to America in terms of some of our policies and laws that we got passed in terms of how we looked at defining race and racial inferiority. 